My name is Sophia Snow. I'm born and raised in Boston. What I do, well, what I've been doing for basically all of high school up and up through now and hopefully for the rest of my life is community organizing with young people, um, anti-violence, anti-budget cuts, pro-jobs, pro-creative work, programming, youth programming, all these different things. I really love dedicating my time and my energy to um, giving young people positive things to do and just helping us, you know, regain our control and our power and our voice. So how I do that is as a community organizer, as a poet, um, a spoken word artist, as uh, an MC, as an educator, I try. First came dance. I, I kind of like, that was my haven. That was my thing that kept me safe um, and kept me busy. And I was just dancing all the time. Um, and in that, I started. I was in a scholarship program that allowed me to take some leadership roles, um, start learning how to teach, how to lead, working in the office, how to organize that way, do some clockwork stuff. Um, and through dance, I got into a program called um, High Score Task Force, and that's when I started community organizing. And then came poetry. Uh, and how I started in poetry is the reason why I love teaching poetry workshops, why I really know the power in art um, saving young people's lives. Just how dance saved my life, then moving on to poetry. Um, I was in 10th grade and um, I wrote my first poem and I was really angry and I just had to take a pause from dancing because I had injured myself. And um, so I was kind of like sitting in bed and I decided, you know what, I'm gonna just write. And I just ranted, I wrote everything I could possibly think of from like Martin Luther King to the community to Rwanda to all these things in like one long like seven minute poem. And I didn't even know what spoken word was. I like never heard or read or seen spoken word. Um, I just had this really long poem um, that had a lot of my like energy and passion and concerns in it. We were having a Latino night at my school and I asked, my sister was on the e-board, the executive board, so I asked her if I could perform it. They said, yeah, if you cut it down. Um, but that point didn't come until I had spoken with a teacher of mine and she was like the cool teacher in school. She was like young, low-key a DJ, you know, I felt like I could trust her and I just had this poem that I really didn't know what to do with it. Um, so I asked her one day after class if I could read it to her and I was like so nervous. I <laughs> I remember, it's like imagine like a seven, eight minute poem like stretched out because I'm like shaking and like, you know, mumbling and stumbling over my words and all this stuff. And like by the time I was done reading it to her, I expected she was going to be like, you know, grading papers. Like by the time I looked up, she was going to be like, oh yeah, good. yeah, great, Sophia. Um, but she was crying. And um, the fact that like I had anything to say that could move someone to tears like was a reality check for me. It was like, you know, I didn't put no value really to what I had besides the fact that I meant it. And here was an older person that I respected who looked at what I had, who heard me for what I was, for what I had to say and she was moved, really moved by it. Um, and that's why I always love to tell teachers like how you respond to your students is so vital because if she was grading papers, I probably would have never wrote another poem in my life. I probably would have been like, yeah, um, I suck at this. <laughs> um, but the fact that uh, she responded to it, you know, she didn't really give much critique or feedback. She just responded. She didn't even need to say anything. Um, that meant so much to me. And that started this quest of me finding my voice um, in ways that I never really tried to find it before. So, I mean, I. From that point, that's when I told my sister, can I perform at this? And from that point, I got such good feedback and like encouragement that I just kept performing with it. And the more I performed, the more different like youth organizations asked me to come to their open mics or asked me to lead a writing workshop. Um, I learned how to lead writing workshops by just leading them because I had no idea. I was still trying to figure out how to write. But all I knew was like, well, we could sit down, talk about issues, and write about them. That's cool, too, you know. Um, so my writing is very, and my performing is very intertwined with my community organizing. Um, so from there, uh, I just kept at it, and um, eventually I joined this, I got recruited by this program out at the University of Wisconsin-Madison called First Wave, and it's the only program like it in the world. It gives you a full four-year 
um, tuition scholarship uh, for hip-hop theater. So they recruit 15 people from all over the country every year. Um, the b-boys to spoken word artists, MCs to graffiti artists, to violinists, to singers, anything. And we put it together in these big productions that we call hip-hop theater. Um, and we spend the four years majoring in whatever you want to major. We have a b-boy who's a computer science major, you know, a graffiti artist who's a web designer, um, you know, lots of spoken word artists who are English and education majors. Um, me, I'm a social work major, but you also get the opportunity to develop your art form. And for me, that was really like, to get accepted into school for that was was like the was one of my peaks, one of my turning points, another epiphany that um, a lot of people feel like they have to leave their art or to leave their art to pursue their education or leave their education to pursue their art and God had really blessed me with this opportunity to go fully in for both um, and so it's those kind of opportunities that's, that's why I do what I do and why I keep at it is really about going against fear like a lot of people say you know like man I would love to write poetry but I really suck at that like you know and poetry really is just about not being afraid to sound crazy because some of the illest things you ever heard are just someone being unafraid to think outside of this box you know outside of the cliche outside of like what sounds normal right so it really one is writing not fearlessly but writing against your own fears just being like you know what I'm gonna just say it and that so that's one aspect of it also my inspiration comes definitely from the community from my own life so not being afraid to dig in not being afraid to really think about it not being afraid to reveal truth to yourself because the best poetry is always about the truth um, so once you're not afraid to dig into it for yourself, that's when you can really reveal, help reveal it to others. Another thing is uh, dedication. It don't come easy. Um, it's not about just like rolling out of bed and being the best writer there ever was. I mean, for the rest of your life, you might have one good poem every 20 poems. You know, one good essay out of every 20 essays. One good screenplay out of every 20. Um, but it's about working at it. Uh, feel like all of us are blessed from birth with these little seeds and sometimes these little seeds are you know just a curiosity about something or are, is a passion for something or you know is an interest or something like that something that wants that you want to be pulled into and really it's just a seed that you were blessed with and you have to grow it you have to commit to it you have to nourish it you have to work on it um, and help that blossom it doesn't just come easy I mean I'm sure somewhere there's that five-year-old prodigy playing the piano for no reason um, but the rest of us got to work at what we want to do it's all about being dedicated to it being real about it knowing that not everything you do is gonna be perfect or amazing but it's about getting through the imperfections and getting through the weak writing or the weak work to find those like strong things and um, the strong things you can come up with. And eventually, you build yourself up to the point where you produce more and more strong things. Worldwide exclusive, Grand Larceny, OTO, yeah, with Sophia Snow. You figure the destruction is worth the glory. The stories of the riches have you wishing for more cream till you're fiending for money. Blinded by the gleam in your jewelry. Do we sit back and let you kill the community so you can have a little self esteem? It seems your team means enough to you to ignore the screams of babies wishing their moms weren't fiends. If only Malcolm dreamed how y'all would define his by any means.